Hello, in this video we're going to do another grid world custom bug. We're actually going to complete the Z bug, which can be found in the grid world case study part two, um, one of the questions in the exercise. So you should take a second to read through it, but essentially what we want our bug to do is to walk in a Z pattern. Um, that bug is going to start in this top left hand corner, and it's going to have a length associated with it, and it's going to walk in a Z pattern. So it's going to head this way, down, and it's going to start by facing um, east for this problem. Now, like always, I don't just make these videos to show you how to do these do these various problems. There are some big takeaways that we want to kind of take from this. Um, the first one is big takeaway with grid world is only call move if can move is equivalent to true. That's really important. And anytime you call the move method, you need to call can move first to check if it can move. Um, secondly, don't use loops in the ACT method. This is the problem that I'm given to students. They often try and use loops to accomplish this task. Remember, we're doing a lot of testing with single bugs on the screen, but if you have 10 or 11 bugs on the screen and you hit step, they each have to take one step in their process. So let's take a look at a possible solution or a common solution that students will give me. So before we do this, I'm going to go into my box bug running. You'll see I've modified it. Um, I have a rock here right now, but I'm going to take the rock out. Um, and I've created this Z bug called Alice. And if I execute it, there's Alice. And I'm going to hit step. And it makes a perfect Z, but what it's done is it's done the entire pattern in one, one pass, which is not what we want. So let's take a look at why that happens. If I come into my Z bug, here's my bad implementation. It's actually incorrect. Notice we say if can move, and if that's true, then we have this um, loop here that basically moves it the number of times we need to. And then we call turn three times to go from 90 degrees to 235 degrees. Um, and then we say if can move again, we use a loop, we move, and then we call turn um, five times, which is going to go from 235 and take it back around to 90. And then we call, we say if can move, then we call a loop, and we say move. One, one little thing to point out is often people would write this kind of like this here. Remember, since the conditional statement contains one single line, and the, which is a for loop, and the for loop contains one single line of instruction, which is move, um, we don't actually need braces in this case. If your conditional statement or your loop structure has a single line of code associated with it, no braces are needed. Okay, so this is this is bad for a whole bunch of reasons, but let's talk about a couple things that um, what I would point out to a student. The first thing is my question would be we want to avoid well my question would be why why did you use turn three times here? What we want to do is is we want to avoid putting turn a whole bunch of times. You're better off to use the set direction method. So set direction is going to set the direction of the bug, and I have to pass it an integer value. So I'm going to pass it 235 degrees. Okay. Now, a little trick of the trade here is the location class actually has um, constants, and so I can do location dot uh, southwest, and that will set the direction. Same thing up here, down here. I don't want to call the turn method a whole bunch of times. So I can go set direction, location dot, and I'm going to set the direction east. So now if I come in here to my box bug runner and I execute this, oh, I have an error. Where's my error? In here, what did I do wrong? Oh, semicolon, dreaded semicolon. So now let's go back to box bug runner and I run it. it still runs perfectly fine. Ooh. See that second problem? <laughs> it didn't stop after one Z. It kept going. And then the bug seemed to terminate itself. So a couple other problems here. So let's take a look at where, where those problems come from. So again, um, we want to avoid these loops in here. Even though we check if can move the first time, um, it's it only checks it the first time it moves. We have to check if can move every time it moves. So what we really want here is we actually want to reverse it like this. And if we take, if we switch this step here, 
Now what's happening is we're checking if it can move every time we try and move the bug. Pull this back here and kind of make this a little neater. So now if I go back into my if I go back in here, and remember this is still a, not a good implementation by any means, but we're just doing things that are important. If I hit step, step, it still runs afterwards, but notice here, notice how the bug doesn't, doesn't self-terminate? That's because I call can move every time before I call the move method. So again, the reason why this is a bad implementation, in fact, an incorrect implementation, is because we're using loops in here. That means that this act method, when I hit step, is going to dominate, take, will take control of the processor, and it's going to go through the whole loop and not deal with any other bug on the screen. Remember, we usually have multiple bugs on the screen, and we don't want one bug taking up all the processing power. We want, if we hit step, each bug should take one step in the process. Um, so let's look at a good implementation, or better implementation. So I'm going to comment this out. OK, so here's a better implementation. So I've gone and just basically commented in some other code. I'm going to go into my box bug runner. I'm going to run it. Oh, I have an error. I'm going to go here and figure out where my error is. Let me just pause and figure out what this error is here. Okay, I found my error. It was just a character hanging around down here. All right, so now my Z bug's ready to run. So I'm going to go in here, same runner. Just going to use a little different code in Z bug and watch. Now if I hit step, the bug takes a single step. And then it stops. And this is the big thing. The Z bug has to stop. We don't want it to keep going. The other reason why this implementation is better is well, satisfies all the requirements, is that I'm going to add a rock to this grid, and I'm going to run it again. Oh, what did it like there? Oh, we don't want to add that. I want to keep this commented out. Sorry, I want this line in here. So now we're going to run this again, and so now I've put a rock in front of my bug, and watch. It doesn't consume the rock. That's really important. It just stops. So let's take a look at what we did. So if I come into Zbug here, what we do is we set up a bunch of if statements. So we start off, we say if steps is less than side length and can move, so this is checking to make sure the bug can make a movement, then we move and then we increment steps by one. Eventually steps will be equal to side length and that's when we enter this statement here and now we want to set the direction to southwest. Now notice I didn't put can move inside the if structure up there because I, can't, I, don't want to, I can't check if they can move until they're facing the right direction. So I have to face the right direction first, and then I have to check if it can move, and then I have to move. Then I increment my steps. Um, here, now we do the same thing, but now we check side length times 2 and can move, and we move, incrementing step each time. Now when steps is equivalent to side length times 2, we set the direction, we check if we can move, we move, and we increment steps. And then if steps is less than side length times 3 and can move, we move, we increment steps. And so what happens now is steps will eventually pass side length times 3, and now this bug has no actual code that's accessible in the ACT method. So this is a pretty common implementation. Um, just to kind of reinforce a couple things, remember, make sure you call that can move before you move. And if you have to set the direction, Make sure that um, you check can move after you've reset the direction. This is what a number of people would do when they write this. They cut, they do this. Oh, pardon me. Okay, and the problem with this is we check if we can move, then we change the direction of the bug, and after this, it very well could be the case that the bug can no longer move. Um, so let's go back. Now I've been talking quite a bit in this video, so I'm going to wrap up in one second. But I want to point one last thing out. What a lot of people do when they, when they actually implement this exercise is they create their bug and then they actually go and click on the grid. So let's just go box bug runner here and run this. Now notice my bug is already facing 90 degrees. Often what they have, their bug will face an 
random directions and they have to go set direction which is right there so one thing to always think about is what are my initial conditions of my bug and be sure make use of that constructor so notice I've set my direction to 90 anyways I hope this video helped have a great day um, any other questions please feel free to post a comment um, I'd love to answer more videos it really gives me a chance to practice some of my teaching have a great day